In this video, we're going to take a look at what is known as the root locus. So what is the root locus? The word root here refers to the roots of some polynomial of interest, typically the characteristic equation of a transfer function. Locus is mathematically defined as a set of points which share a common property. So a root locus is the set of all of the roots of a polynomial as some parameter, for example, a gain in the system, is varied. For example, we could ask the question, how do the roots of the closed loop transfer function of the mass on a spring with some damping change as the gain, say, from the control law C of S is equal to KP, is varied? We could solve analytically for the solution to the poles and let the gain vary from zero to infinity and plot the poles in the complex plane. This is a simple exercise for quadratics, but what about higher order polynomials? Before the advent of computers, Evans came up with several methods for plotting the root locus. Of course, now we would simply use the rlocus command in MATLAB. However, Evans' methods do provide insight into how a controller design will affect the root locus of a transfer function, and some general design conclusions can be reached. Once we have the root locus, we can ask questions such as, for what values of kp does the system go unstable? How do zeta and omega n change as kp is varied, etc.? Let's go ahead and take a look at this simple example where the control law is given by a proportional control law, kp, and g of s, the open loop transfer function, is a mass on a spring with some damping. We can certainly draw the block diagram for this system, and we use a series compensator with unity feedback with a minus sign. And we can write down the closed loop transfer function as we normally would. We have the forward path divided by 1 plus c of s times g of s. And after some work, we end up with kp omega n squared all over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared times 1 plus kp. So the effect of adding this gain kp is that we get a gain in the numerator, and we affect the stiffness down here in the denominator. And what we want to look at is what happens to s plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared times 1 plus kp, which is the characteristic equation of the closed loop system. And I set that equal to 0. And we want to know what happens as kp goes from 0 to infinity. Well, for reasons that will become clear in class, we have to separate the stuff that has to do with kp from the stuff that doesn't have to do with kp. And then we're going to go ahead and divide through. So in other words, I have s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared, and then separate out omega n squared times kp equals 0. And then I'm going to divide this whole thing by s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. So I end up with 1 plus kp times omega n squared over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared is equal to 0. We typically call this thing here L of s. And notice this is just the open loop transfer function of the system. So this is what we need to pass into the R locus command. So when we go to use MATLAB, we're going to type R locus of what we're using here, L, or. So let's let omega n equal 2 and zeta equal 1 half. And let's find out what happens when we use MATLAB to find the root locus of this system. We can analyze the root locus of our system using MATLAB. In this case, we're going to let omega n equal 2, zeta is equal to 1 half. And we can go ahead and define the transfer function g using the tf command. We have omega n squared and 1, 2 times zeta times omega n and omega n squared. And there's our transfer function. We can verify that indeed we have a mass on a spring with some damping using the step command. We get some overshoot and uh, some selling time. And another interesting thing to look at is the poles of the open loop transfer function are at minus 1 plus or minus 1.73 uh, j or i. And then we can go ahead and use the r locus command pass in the open loop transfer function, and we get this plot. Now, what we notice from this plot is that the poles start at 
the open loop location of the poles, so minus 1, plus or minus 1.7j. And then as kp increases, the imaginary part goes off to plus or minus infinity, but the real part stays the same. Now the question is, can we verify this result analytically? Let's verify that the poles of the closed loop transfer function actually do what the R locus, R locus command predicts. So let's go ahead and uh, find uh, the poles of the closed loop. We can write down P12 is equal to negative uh, 2 zeta omega n plus or minus the square root of 2 zeta omega n squared minus 4 times omega n squared times 1 plus kp. And then that's all divided by 2. All these 2s here uh, will go ahead and cancel out. And we can go ahead and factor out a uh, omega n squared and a minus 1. And we end up with minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega n times the square root of uh, 1 plus kp minus zeta squared. Now, when kp is 0, we get the open loopholes of a typical mass on a spring with some damper, damping, which is what we found using our locus command. And indeed, when kp goes to infinity, we see that only the imaginary part is affected by that, and the real part stays constant. So we've looked at a simple example of what the root locus is and how it can be constructed. Moving on in class, we're going to have to take a look at what else can the root locus tell us about a controller design. And in particular, we're going to look at what we call lead and lag and notch filtering.